Okay guys and welcome back to another student questions answered. Now this question is from Katrina. Now Katrina has a, I would imagine a huge data table that sorted something like this simple data table that you can see here. Now you can download this file uh, complete with all the code from this particular lecture. Now the challenge here is that Katrina has written some code that she wants to act on data that's been read into an array. So the element of the, or the flavor of the question is with a data set that looks like this, read group one into the array and then go and do the other clever stuff with it and then loop down and read group two into the same array, overwriting the original data, obviously. So we're going to reuse the array for this particular block of data, 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 and so on and so forth. Now we know we can simply load an array uh, using a bit of code just like this. So my test array equals range A2 to C3. And if I add a watch to that and just uh, step through that code, we can see bump, bump, bump. And when we have a look down here, we have two elements from A2 to C3. And when we expand, we can see that we have one absolute B absolute two, one absolute B absolute two, absolute C absolute two in our first element. And our sec second element, we have the next line down. So the trick is we want to be able to do that, but build this string dynamically at runtime. So what I'm going to do is uh, delete that watch and whiz up to here. And here's some code I prepared earlier. Now, th it's basically it's an option based one. So our array will always begin at element one rather than element zero. And we have two variables. We have my count, which we're going to load the count of this particular cell value from column A using the application worksheet function count if and my array, which we're just going to declare as a variant because we actually don't know what kind of data we're going to be holding. So there are our two variables. First line of code pick the first cell, so A2, and that's that. And here we have our loop. So let me just um, let me just add a watch to this so we can see what it does. Okay, right, so here we go. Let's step through. So range A2 select, do while the active cell doesn't equal blank. We've used that many times throughout the course. So basically iterate through the whole of this data table, however long it is, until we get to the first blank and then stop. So this is the code that we want it to look like. So my array equals range A2 to C3 dot value. That will read the whole of that data block, the whole of that range into our array. Now what we're going to do now is get the count of how many times the active cell value 1 appears in column A. So we're going to use the application worksheet function. And when I step through, we can see that it appears twice. Now the data is sorted perfectly, so that's perfectly fine and that will work here. Next, we're going to build this string dynamically. So we're going to say range, the active cell address, which is absolute A, absolute 2. And so we're concatenating the separator, colon, C. So absolute A, absolute 2, 2, C, and the active cell dot row. So we're on row 2, plus my count, which is 2. And then we're going to subtract 1 to get us back to 3. So we're going to go A2 to C3. And then we're going to read all that into my array. And when I hit F8, I can have a look there. And you can see that that's pulled this row and this row into our array. And this bit here, the add your own clever code here, that's where Katrina is going to use uh, this array to do some other clever things with. And then we're going to move down to the next group by using the active cells at offset my count. Remember, we've already captured my count here. So when I hit F8, we're instantly going to jump down to the next group and we're going to go through our loop again. How many times does two appear in column A? Well, this time it appears three times. So now we want to load into my array range A4 to C4 plus 3 minus 1. And now we can see that all three have been loaded. So this time we've captured this line of data, this line of data, and this line of data. Again, we're going to use the my count to offset once more, F8. And then we're down to block three. So when we step through, my count equals one. So this time it will be from A7 to C7 plus one minus one. Uh, this time my count equals three. And now we have one, two, and three 
three. Okay, and then when we get down to the bottom, obviously that's going to end. Okay, so that's how you can use a simple loop to read blocks of data, providing that it's organized in this way by using the application worksheet function COUNTIF to work out how big that range is. Okay, hopefully that helped. And as always, if you have any questions, do let me know and I'll be happy to help you. Have a great day.